Well, first of all, can you talk a little bit more about Gaza as an open air prison? And um, I, I think I've heard you and others describe it as like uh, like a laboratory, almost mm -hmm. like a weapons testing laboratory. And uh, could, could you talk about that a little bit? So yeah, absolutely. Gaza is an open air prison. And I think that's actually generous to call it an open air prison. I think it functions more as like a concentration camp, a very large one where 2 million people can't enter, they can't leave. I mean, yesterday on Breakthrough News, we've been doing these uh, po these uh, live streams, which I suggest everybody watching tune into today at 3 p.m. Eastern um, on YouTube. But we've been doing these live streams and we spoke to this journalist in Gaza and I had to catch myself because, you know, I asked her, I said, oh, you know, were you in Gaza in 2014? And she said, of course I was in Gaza in 2014. I've never left Gaza. And she was maybe my age, like in her early 30s, I assume, or late 20s. Uh, and I was just thinking to myself, oh, right. Like people can't leave. They just, they, they're born in Gaza and they never leave because they literally are prevented from leaving by the Israelis. Israel controls the air land and sea borders to Gaza. Gaza is surrounded by Israeli gunboats. It's routinely subjected to Israeli drones and sometimes strikes constantly surveilling it. And Israel is stationed at the border and shoots anybody that gets too close to it. We saw that happen two years ago during the Great March of Return, three years ago during the Great March of Return when Palestinians protested at the border and started to walk to the border fence and Israel just shot and killed people or shot them and paralyzed them by shooting them in the knee. So this can only be described as a prison. It's an open air prison of 2 million people. I mean, in all 2000, the 2000s, the UN would constantly warn, you know, by 2020, Gaza's water is gonna be undrinkable. It's 2021, Gaza, it's tw Gaza has no drinkable water and it's still in the situation it is. It's an active attempt of ongoing de-development and, and punishment of the population. Uh, of punishment of the Palestinian population in Gaza for voting Hamas in charge and refusing to submit to their own erasure. That's why Gaza is treated like this. On top of that, I do, I call Gaza a weapons laboratory. And the West Bank is a weapons laboratory too, but I think Gaza is a more extreme version of this because Israel has control over millions of Palestinians who have no rights, right? It has to, it has to come up with new and sophisticated and technologically advanced ways of controlling and dominating these people to prevent them from rising up against their oppression, to push them into smaller and smaller you know, enclaves, like I mentioned, and to pacify them, right? They can't just kill all of them. That wouldn't be okay. Like the world, I think that would be like the red line if Israel just killed all of them. So it has to control them. And so in order to do this, it has this huge industry, this military technology surveillance industry is booming in Israel. You know, Israel's called the startup nation. Part of the reason it's called that is because it has a bunch of startups that specialize in border technology, that specialize in border surveillance, that specialize in drone surveillance and drone warfare. You know, Israel's, I think, one of the biggest sellers of drones in the world. And the reason it's perfected these mechanisms of control and domination and war so much is because it engages in constant warfare against Palestinians. So it has this, this population of defenseless guinea pigs who have no rights um, that it can just test out its weapons on. And so it can put the stamp of approval on all of its weapons in the international weapons arena that say battle tested and combat proven. And that's true, it's battle tested and combat proven on Palestinians. And when you're able to say that as a weapons company, whether it's, you know, Elbit systems or the Israel defense systems or whatever, there's like a million different Israeli weapons companies. But as a weapons company, when you're able to say battle tested and combat proven, it's like the seal of approval that makes people want to buy your product. And so in many ways, you know, what happens to Palestinians is not isolated to Palestine because Israel then goes and sells all this technology it creates to control them to everyone, including the US. I mean, there's a lot of Israeli technology used at the US-Mexico border and at borders all around the world. I think like dozens and dozens and dozens of countries have Israeli drone technology. Um, and so it's in many ways, Palestine is kind of like this lens into how the most vulnerable among us are going to be treated because the technology used on them is then used on people who are subjugated and oppressed all around the world.